are suffering just as much people who actually vote for, for the BNP. So to, to, to make it out to be a black and white issue um, economically, I, th I think is a fallacy. You didn't answer the question about whether or not you can test elections. I'll ask you another one. Who pays your bills? Wayman, question. Who pays your bills at the uh, UAF? Uh, um, you know, we've got members of people that join and they join and pay. We've got thousands of members that join and pay a subscription. We also oh. get donations from the trade union. Are you funded by the government? Is it taxpayers' money that runs your organisation that exists solely to subvert the democratic process and, as you've alluded to, uh, coerces with not only the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives, merely to bring down the BN BNP? Is that, is that a taxpayer-funded organisation? Wayman, well, are you getting money from the government in any way, shape or form? No. We no. don't get any money from the government or anything like that. We get money from the Holocaust survivors, family, people that were murdered, which the BNP denies. We get money from people that face racist attacks, which have been organised by the BNP. We get money from people that have been... Again, I just have to step in and say that those are entirely your allegations, Wayman. They're not allegations. Well, yes, the it's allegations the that... of the BNP is that, a Wayman, Holocaust denier. Sorry, this that... Is, I, this, Actually, that's not true, Wayman, because there's no such offence of Holocaust denial in this country. Yeah, he so how can he be convicted? He's a criminal, isn't he? You well, that's not what you are said. Are you denying that he's not got a conviction? He has got, convi he got He's got a conviction for... It's a free speech. It's he's a got thought a crime. a conviction for racial incitement. Well, right. if you want this to go... This is part of the lies of the fascists. I mean, they, they just refuse to accept, right, that that is the case. And whenever their members... Their, one of their members was a dentist, was caught with huge holes of explosives. Suddenly, he's not a good member, he's just a court member. Let, let's be very clear about this. The biggest thing about the problem with the fascists is they tell lies. I mean, Nick Griffin has a conviction. Does for... Jerry Gable, one of your close associates at Searchlight, does he have a criminal conviction? And if he did, would you share the kind of opinions that you just said about ourselves? Um, question there, you did hear it, Wayman, so there, here it is now, me repeating it, so you're not talking to Simon Darby. But me. Right. So okay. You said you asked me that. I I have to ask you the question that Simon just asked you. There's uh, a gentleman at search. Gable has a lifelong um, tradition of standing up against fascism, and uh, you know. Does he have a criminal conviction? Is, there's lots of people with different types of convictions who oh, I've worked no. with. I, I'm not saying there's any kind of problem. What I am saying about that is, there's a difference between a political leader. There's no political leader in this country that has a conviction for incitement to racial hatred. There isn't one. The only leader of any fascist or racist organisation is the BNP. And we have to be very clear about that, and that's something they don't put inside their, inside their, um, their documents. Well, let me just tell you about that criminal conviction, because most people in this country would be astonished and very angry that you can actually get a criminal conviction for what Nick actually did. He published a magazine in which one of the things he was convicted for was a illustration, an illustration of some Viking ships sailing out to sea, and it had a woman looking from the coast. That was interpreted as a message that we wanted to send everybody back in a boat. Now, I don't mind you talking about that kind of criminal conviction, because most people I'm hearing the truth would be absolutely amazed that in this country, the so-called cradle of democracy and an area of the world where free speech is, is cherished, somebody could actually face a prison sentence for that. Two years ago, Nick Griffin was on trial, which most people know in Leeds. He made some very um, hard-hitting, but in my view, poignant and truthful comments about fundamentalism. He faced seven years in prison merely for something that he said. Now, you've accused us of being a fascist organisation. Do you agree with those kind of measures of locking people up in prison if they say the wrong thing? Overreaction by the judiciary and the establishment, uh, uh, Wayman, your comments. Um, he wasn't convicted for that. He was convicted for saying that a few people were turned into lampshades and whatever. No, he right? wasn't. But he said it was the biggest hoax in history. That's what he was convicted again, lies. Right? He was convicted because he wrote a document that denied the Holocaust and linked that with what the problems of ethnic groups are in Britain. That's why he was convicted. Um, you can look up the case yourself if you, you know, just to prove that these people tell lies. I was there, Wayman. Tell me, tell me. Why, um, I believe that, um, you 
you know, everybody's in favour of freedom of speech. That's what we want to defend. But you have to have live in a society where you're allowed to do that. And unfortunately, the BNP have a long tradition, and the National Front and fascist organisations and the BUF of suppressing people's democratic rights. Because after all, that's what Hitler did. He said, he let me, when he came to power, he stopped everybody's democratic rights. Now, um, the BNP call the Second World War the Brothers' War because they think that, they, you know, fundamentally fascism shouldn't have been fought. And I think we have to be very clear, that is the tradition that they stand in. That was Wayman Bennett of UAF, Unite Against Fascist, Fascism, and he was talking to Simon Darby, the deputy leader of the BNP. Who won that one? What were your thoughts there? Who came out of that one the best? It's not just in these sorts of contests a question of who had the best arguments and who put them the best, but there were a whole variety of things. You might have an instinctive liking or disliking for somebody in a dispute such as that. You might feel that Wayman Bennett was rather ridiculous to say that he wasn't going to talk to Simon Darby and I, the host, had to relay Simon's questions to him, although on occasion Wayman couldn't wait to get stuck in himself. Uh, as for the bit about who am I speaking to, uh, 60 seconds after he'd been told it was Simon Darby, um, and I do have an issue with Wayman Bennett claiming that he didn't know he was going to be on with Simon Darby, I don't know how clear you have to make it that um, that you're going to be talking with somebody if you're invited to be in an interview with them, that they're going to be there at the same time as you. Um, it's possible that Wayman genuinely believed that we were going to interview him and finish that interview and then talk to Simon Darby as a separate interview. But, good listener, is that what you wanted to hear? No. Uh, let's take a call. This is Adam who's rung in from London. Hello, Adam. Hiya. Hey. You right? Yeah, good, you. Yeah, not too bad. Um, basically, I just heard the conversation there. Um, I don't really see how you can compare the British National Party to being Nazis. I don't understand the correlation at all there. I mean, this is an organisation that killed six million Jews. The British National Party are a democratic party which merely wants to represent, you know, a section of our community in England. It just feels under attack at the moment, you know? And you see the Islamification of the whole of the United Kingdom in various ways. Um, when I heard that UAF guy, it just reminded me when I was at university, and they set up stalls and stuff, and they'll say racism this. I was the only white person in my lecture. I don't understand where they get this from. Um, it wasn't long ago when uh, the Palestine marches, they, had, uh, they were getting very violent on the streets. I didn't even see that on the news, but I saw it just walking out of the station. You know, the aggression, the violence. I don't understand. Got to ask, are you a member of the BNP? <clears throat> Pardon? I said, I've got to ask, are you a member of the BNP? Oh, no, I'm not. No, no, no. You're a supporter of the BNP? Um, yeah, I, could, I, can, I support on a broad variety of their views. I mean, it's basically common sense, really, on so many of their policies now. Um, liberal, conservative, Labour... They're all basically the same, really, and you don't really have enough, any other choices to vote these days, especially if you're in certain areas or you live in certain cities and you're basically a minority now where you live and you see around you the whole culture has changed, the whole society has changed around you in the space of even, like, the last ten years. Um, you don't really have a choice but to vote for the BNP these days. Mm. Um, it's just simply that, you know, it's not racist, it's not anger, it's just looking around you, seeing what sections of society are being aggressive, are imposing their culture onto you, um, and you just really don't have a choice but to vote for a party such as the BNP, if that's something that's quite important to you. Whereabouts in London are you? I live in Vauxhall. Okay. A um, very multicultural area. Yeah. And having finished university, mm -hmm. um, have you got yourself a job yet? No, I haven't. I'm still looking for work, um, unfortunately. Um... I mean, I don't know the credit crunch or whatever. I've applied for so many things now that that's another issue. But, you know, like I say, my experience at university being the, basically the minority there and basically the minority where I live now, um, I've, you know, it's just, it's just common sense, really. You just see around you, you see the violence on the streets with regards to crime. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I'm grateful for your call, Adam in London. Thanks for that. Talk to you again sometime. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.